Maybe you've seen stories on the news recently saying that bee populations are in decline. This is true, and beekeepers have reported losses of up to a third of their colonies in a single winter. But it's not just bees that are in trouble. Other animal species which pollinate flowering plants have also seen declines in their numbers in recent years, and this is not good news. This is happening because as the human population grows, areas of wild lands that were once valuable habitat for these pollinator species are now being taken up by our civilizations, and pollinators that once lived here can no longer get to the other resources that they so desperately need over here. Simply put, without habitat area for these pollinator species, we won't have these pollinator species anymore. And without bees and hummingbirds and butterflies and moths, we won't actually get to eat any of the foods that we've grown to love. Apples and almonds and so many others all depend on these animal pollinators for reproduction. And same with a lot of the flowering plants that grow in our garden. We won't get to enjoy their beauty and their scent anymore if these pollinator species go extinct. So you might be asking yourself, how can I help? Enter the seed bomb. Seed bombs are a great way of getting plants to grow in areas where they might not, like unused areas in cities or empty lots or even construction sites. They're made of equal parts compost and clay, moistened and held together with a little bit of water, and of course filled with seeds. Best of all, seed bombs are really easy and really fun to make. Here's how. Start with a little bit of clay and a little bit of water. Moisten the clay and work it in your hands until it's about the texture of soft serve ice cream. Next, add in compost that you get from your own backyard pile or from the garden center nearby and start to mix it all together. This is going to take a little while and it's going to get your hands dirty, but isn't that kind of the point? You're ready to form your seed bombs when your ingredients are all mixed together. Start by pinching off a lump of clay and rolling it into a sphere. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it does need to be about the size of a quarter. Next up, you're ready to add your seeds, but a quick note before you do. Make sure that the seeds you select are from plants that are native to your area so that you don't accidentally damage your local ecosystem and are the right kind of plant to support the pollinators you want to protect. Any questions? Just ask someone at your local garden center. Next, sculpt your sphere into a bowl and use that bowl shape to catch two to three seeds. Roll it back into a sphere and put it in a safe spot. Repeat this process until you've used all of your materials. Again, this might take a little while. Then put your completed bombs in a safe spot to dry. You'll know your seed bombs are dry when they're lighter in color and dry to the touch. Store them in a labeled paper bag until you're ready to head out on your next adventure and then throw them over fences and into empty lots, even into construction sites to provide useful habitat for pollinator species. Thanks for watching! If you made seed bombs after watching this video, please visit the map linked in the video's description and share where you threw yours.